We're learning from the Associated Press and Israeli strike on a five-story building where displaced Palestinians were sheltering in the northern Gaza Strip killed at least 34 people early this Tuesday, more than half of them women and children according to Gaza's health ministry. Now, in a separate development, Lebanon's militant group Hezbollah saying it's chosen Sheikh Naim Qasim as its new top leader. This is following the killing of Hassan Nasrallah during an Israeli airstrike last month. Joining us live this morning to further discuss the very latest of conflict in the Middle East is the former advisor to the office of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Ms. Ruthie Bloom. Ruthie, good morning. Always a pleasure having you here with us on Live Now from Fox. Good morning, Gina. It's always a pleasure being here. So this latest strike further showing that the conflict with Hamas nowhere near over. This as Egypt is proposing a two-day ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. If you could catch us up, please. Okay, so first of all, what you announced about the dead people in Gaza, I would take that with a grain of salt because it was announced by the Gaza Health Ministry, quote unquote, uh, what's more significant that happened in northern Gaza this morning is that 600 Hamas terrorists surrendered. Uh, they had been holed up in an area of a hospital. They were in a refugee camp area, and uh, the IDF encircled them and then separated civilians from terrorists. 600 of the terrorists uh, surrendered, 5,000 of um, others, of, of residents, uh, were allowed to leave, and uh, that's civilians, so to speak. And uh, that's very, very significant. You see, those terrorists were the ones who were shooting at the legs of any resident in Gaza, trying to get out of harm's way. Because as we know, Hamas uses other Gazans as human shields. So this has opened up, a, this is an amazing development. That's what's significant about what happened today in Gaza. It's also not true that we're nowhere near the end of fighting in Gaza. It is true that we are still searching for the hostages, uh, trying to rescue them, while also fighting Hamas and trying to get a deal brokered through Egypt and Qatar. Ruthie, thank you so much for breaking that down. I guess that's where the confusion lies, because people would think that the conflict is nowhere near over as the strikes are continuing. Usually as the war is scaling back, so will the fighting. Could you provide that perspective, please? Also, thank you for mentioning that about the Gaza Health Ministry. We do know they don't differentiate between combatants and the terrorists. So thank you so much for that as well. That's right. And by the way, every time they report a number, they always say it's all women and children. If you did a calculation from the beginning of the war, you'd think that Gaza is only made up of women and children. So as I said, you have to take that with a grain of salt. Uh, what is important is that w that Israel has destroyed most of Hamas's battalions in Gaza. It's not that it's finished. It hasn't been finished and it won't be finished until we get the hostages out of there. Um, there are dead hostages and live hostages. We consider even dead ones as hostages needing to be returned home for burial. The uh, What is going on there, though, is, in, is, is really successful. Now, reports were yesterday that Egypt had suggested some kind of two-day pause in the fighting to enable four hostages to be freed by Hamas. Here's the trouble with that, though Prime Minister Netanyahu said if such a deal had been offered him, he would have grabbed it. But no such deal was either offered or certainly Hamas rejected it. So Hamas is still stuck in its, uh, in its demands that it remain in power, that the IDF exit Gaza, that, uh, that Gaza be uh, returned to the pre-October 7th state that it was in, which is to say run by a terrorist organization and free of the IDF. Well, that's not happening. So, Ruthie, um, how big is the terroristic organization of Hamas? Because I know over the weekend, Israeli Defense Forces, they captured about 100 Hamas militants out in the Gaza area. But, of course, there are still several others. I know at the beginning of this conflict, uh, people didn't think Hamas was as wide scale as it is. Well, you know, there are terrorists who are members of Hamas, but then there are also fellow travelers. There are also civilians who take money from Hamas, who participated in the October 7th massacre. Sometimes it's hard to distinguish between those who are actually, you could say, Hamas actual members, you know, soldiers of Hamas, so to speak. 
Um, but it is extensive. The thing is that, that Hamas was actually very popular in Gaza, as it is in the West Bank, I have to point out. If there were elections held today uh, in the West Bank where Fatah, which is uh, uh, Mahmoud Abbas's party, where it rules, uh, the reason he won't allow elections because he knows Hamas will win. So, you know, Hamas is very, that that terrorist organization that is backed by by Iran and whose uh, platform is to kill all Jews um, is, uh, is still going strong. However, uh, Israel is managing to cause not only the surrender of many of them who, by the way, those terrorists who surrender realize that their fate in Israel's hands is a little better than it would be if they were captured by other Hamas members who consider them, let's say, collaborators with Israel. So uh, the main point is the captured Hamas fighters and fellow travelers can provide immense amounts of, um, of um, intelligence. And some of them clearly know where there are hostages being held uh, and where weapons are, and more tunnels, et cetera. That's why it's so important to capture them. And Ruthie, if the conflict with Hamas wasn't enough that Israel is dealing with, also dealing with the conflict with Hezbollah, learning in a separate development that Hezbollah has picked a new top leader. Uh, as this news came down, what was the reaction from the Israeli community where you are? Well, I have to say there's, it's it's a mixture because you see that after uh, after. Hassan Nasrallah, the chief of, of Hezbollah, was eliminated. Um, then there was a his second in command, or somebody else was appointed instead of him, and then he was promptly eliminated. So what happened to the current one, uh, uh, Naim Qasim, is he hightailed it into uh, Iran because he knew that if, that he was going to be next on the hit list. So he's kind of hiding out in Iran, and he was appointed to head Hezbollah. But the point is, Israel is now showing Iran after its attack uh, on the weekend, over the weekend, and Iran's uh, air defenses and missile fa missile manufacturing uh, capabilities that uh, that we're not stopping until we uh, eliminate the threat. And the threat is mainly from Iran. I mean, Iran sends Hezbollah and Hamas to come to do its dirty work, as it does the Houthis in Yemen. But the idea here is that uh, no, we're not allowing that anymore. Hezbollah cannot rebuild, and it doesn't matter who, who what chief was appointed, and Iran can't do this anymore. I mean, that is the message that Israel is sending. There was some confusion as far as the threat being eliminated, uh, Ruthie, as far as um, if those hostages are returned, there was some type of um, truce deal, for lack of better words, that was given if the hostages are returned out in the Gaza area that, um, I don't know, is it charges won't be filed or if certain people will be let free? Uh, can you put that into perspective of what that is? I know we spoke about it briefly, but as we discuss about the elimination of Hamas, for some people it was counterintuitive to understand uh, if they would still be uh, let go if they did return a hostage. Yeah, that's that's uh, an important point. Mm -hmm. uh, what what uh, you're referring to actually is the sort of carrot and stick uh, suggestion that Israel is coming up with. Uh, once once uh, Sinwar was killed, and he was the mastermind of the October seventh massacre and the head of Hamas, not only in Gaza but also he replaced the head of uh, Hamas outside of Israel. So he was just the big chief of Hamas. And he's dead. So the idea was, OK, this opens up possibilities because uh, everyone in Gaza was terrified of him because he was really a bloodthirsty murderer. He killed lots of his own people with his bare hands and loved doing it. Um, so the idea was like this. Israel would then send out a message to all Hamas members and terrorists. Look, if you return the hostages, you will be allowed to live and leave Gaza and even get money. If you don't return the hostages, you're all dead men walking. Whoever is holding a hostage, I mean, because these hostages are spread out clearly and they're being held by different, different individuals and groups. And some are underground and some are above ground. So the idea is you have to get as many Hamas members as possible to rat, uh, rat out others 
and to return hostages uh, in their own uh, in their own homes, etc. So the idea was you you say to them, you're, we're warning you, you're dead if you don't give us the hostages. But if you do, we will be lenient with you. I like how you use that word, uh, lenient. So does that mean there will still be uh, consequences, but less harsh? Uh, paint that picture for us, please. Well, if actually any of them take us up on this offer, the offer was to be that you can stay alive and you can leave Gaza. You can go somewhere else and you can, we might even provide you a passport and money. So actually, they wouldn't suffer any consequences. No, this is how far Israel is willing to go to get any hostage back. The point, though, is that they can't pose a threat. What they may not be is in Israel. They can't be in Israel or in Gaza. But they can go to another country, maybe Egypt. Again, that's slightly problematic because no other country wants them, as you can understand, including those countries that aided and abetted them in their terrorist actions. Great points as always. Ruthie Bloom, always a pleasure to have you join us to talk international conflict here on Live Now from Fox. Thank you so much for taking out the time to join us bright and early this Tuesday morning. I know it's the afternoon and evening time where you are in Israel. I hope you have a safe rest of your day. Thank you so much, Jeannie. Thank you.